thank you. Uh, officer, again, uh, uh, I'm Godwin Chan, and thank you very much today for uh, doing the presentation on Zoom. Uh, we are going to record very briefly on one-to-one -one for the benefit for people who cannot attend today's Zoom meeting, at least have a recording to hear about, uh, I guess, the main features. Uh, one is how do one get prepared to become a police officer? So to start off, um, good physical um, condition is, is necessary. So um, starting with, you know, the basics, right? Stretching, running, running is key. You need to run a lot, okay? Um, when it comes to um, upper body strength, you can go to the gym or do what you do, push-ups, workout, um, do that. We have practice prep sessions available, right? Um, your regional police recruiting. Um, I know in the summer we had them and before the pandemic, there were even more offered. Um, but going back to the post pandemic, there'll be prep sessions that you can go to just to see what the requirements are um, when it comes to um, being physically ready, okay? Um, the shuttle run is something that you can download the app um, and just get a speaker or, you know, get your phone and mark out it's 20 meters that you have to run. And you just run back and forth. The beep will tell you when to go. And you got to go through the series of um, um, stages. And level seven is what is recommended. Okay. Um, as far as education goes, um, you need to have right now, as it stands, it's still four years of secondary um, school education or equivalency, but that's going to be changing maybe in um, 2022, um, where you're going to need at least um, minimum some college, so, so some post-secondary. Um, as far as uh, you being a good citizen, pretty much, right? So stay away from, you know, speeding, like, you know, watch your, your driving, make sure that you're not breaking, you know, the, 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 the speed limit or breaking um, any other kind of um, traffic violation. Um, you can't have a conviction for which a pardon has not been granted. So if you, by chance, you know, got convicted for whatever, um, at a young age, you have to be um, pardoned before you can join. Your first aid CPR um, is level C, is the basic. You need to get um, an Ontario uh, OECP certificate. So the OECP certificate, it offers, is offered through TNT um, police testing. So you can always look that up and they will, there's a fee, um, you know, associated with that. So I think it's about $250. You got to get this um, the certificate, OACP, it's called Ontario Chiefs of Police um, Certificate. Once you have that certificate, you can apply to any service. And once you apply to, you know, the service that you choose, we prefer to be your regional police, of course, but you can apply to any service within Ontario. Um, then the application um, process starts where you enclose everything, um, you know, your address, your um, work life, your educational life, um, volunteering, which is, is key. Once you have that all in the, in the package, um, for your regional police, you will send it um, via email to recruiting at yrp.ca. That information will then get um, uh, processed. Once it's processed, you will get a number. The number will be forwarded to you and you can use that number as further reference. So if you're gonna call in and you know, say, I'm Godwin Chan and I, you know, um, I have an application with you, you refer to your number and, we, and if there's any additions or updates, you can always update it through 
using that number. Um, the interview process, uh, it, it starts with the pre-background questionnaire and the Sigma survey. Once you come in and you've um, filled those out, um, it's not guaranteed that you will be called in, but if you're called in, you have to be ready to do an interview and it's a panel interview. The panel interview will have minimum two people and it'll review your application, your pre-background questionnaire. And once you review um, and it's satisfied by the interviewers, you will be uh, put in our uh, psychological stage. Thank you, officer. You give a very detail. Um, I, I, I almost uh, thinking that, you know, like you talk about the physical requirements, uh, how much money is involved, the process, that's very helpful. And uh, also about educational background that uh, certainly is very competitive. Um, based on your experience, would you uh, share with us what would be the major challenges for applicants or even to the extent that you're willing to share that your experience as a police officer, well, maybe one is that the challenge to even get on to become an officer. And secondly, uh, to the extent that you can share what's the major challenges after becoming an officer. Well, okay. So with, um, like you said, it is very competitive, but if this is something that, you know, somebody wants, they're going to work hard. One of the challenges is people, they, they may get no, they may hear no one time and they say, oh, I'm done. No, we've had people that, you know, unfortunately it wasn't their time. So we say no. And eventually they, you know, maybe they had to work on something. Um, as for challenges, it's, people that don't take it seriously enough to do the proper training that's necessary. So when we say, and we have um, information sessions that you can you know, sign up for, it's on the, the event calendar on warp.ca. And once you sign up, it'll give you this, um, what I'm giving you right now, but there's actual um, a presentation with pictures and you know, some videos that you know, people will be easier, it'll be easier for some people to go through. That's offered through recruiting. Um, but yeah, as for me, challenging, I think working the night shift and being away from when I first got on, like my family, because my kids were a little bit younger. So being, you know, working from 6 um, p.m. or 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. So you're working the whole night. Now, mind you, it's only two nights out of um, your four um, blocks, right? So the block is four days, two days, two nights. You're only working two nights. So that was maybe a little challenging and can be a little challenging for some um, people is to spend that, um, that time at night. Right. And also I understand that uh, for police, it's not just uh, so-called walk the beat with the uniform. There's actually uh, quite a number of career, career meaning the jobs that uh, you can earn, uh, like computer specialists or something else. Uh, you mind to elaborate, just uh, uh, give us an overview. Uh, just being a police officer, what other kind of type of jobs you can actually uh, get into? So many jobs, so many jobs within this career, like you just um, pointed out, right? You can get into forensics if that's your background, right? You can get, if you, if you have um, a love for animals, you can go um, to the canine unit where you have a dog, you're a dog handler, right? You have officers that are in what we call the, uh, the ERU, emergency response. So these are the guys that are tactically um, um, trained to go out and deal with situations like a uh, um, regular frontline officer, is not trained to the level to deal with this. You have drugs and vice, human trafficking, you have all sorts of um, criminal background, um, criminal investigation. You have so many different areas that you can um, go to tech crimes, 
if that's what you want to do. Because, you know, um, fraud, a lot of people get defrauded, um, you know, all the time. So if that's something that you want to do and try to help stop the stop to, that's another avenue and another job within the career. Excellent. So police is actually just one big kind of door open to many other things. So exactly. the final question kind of is that uh, if you don't mind to share uh, people who are listening, is that what are the most satisfying parts or one satisfying part that you feel that um, as a police officer, what you enjoy most, maybe in another way you put it. And I'll sum it up like this. If um, a criminal offends and there's a victim, so if it's an assault, if it's a robbery, if it's even impaired driving, to take that person off the road and locking them up. Because ultimately, people join police um, services and people don't say it a lot, but we want to catch bad guys. We want to catch bad guys. We want to lock them up. So that to me, if somebody says, you know what, this person assaulted me and they've got like a big, you know, a bruise up or worse, and I can go there and put that person under arrest, that to me is satisfying and one of the most gratifying part of my job. On that note, thank you, officer. Uh, and I just give you a thumbs up. <laughs> and, uh, thank you very much for your time and your generosity, uh, spending your time with us and also outlining for people who are listening that um, the requirements to becoming a police officer and also the doors that open once you become officer. Uh, I like what you say, if you're a dog lover, you can be, you know, a canine unit and so on and so on. Uh, and, but also the satisfactory part based on your, what you just described and making a difference in keeping peace in the community. So thank you so much. Um, and I gather on that note, I wish you uh, a very pleasant uh, late afternoon and evening. And thank you, Emily, here for doing the recording. Uh, I guess we can end the recording now. Um, so um, thank you, Emily, if you're still here. And thank you, officer. Thank you so very much for having me. Yeah, it was my thank pleasure. You. OK, and nice meeting you. Thanks. Yeah, nice meeting you. Too. OK, take care. Take care, you too.